Good afternoon to you. Mark Suddeth, HurricaneTrack.com, here with your hurricane outlook and discussion for Sunday, the 5th day of August 2018. I wanted to show you this as we start off today, a look at the Saharan air layer. Uh, it's densest, at least the dust, in this particular picture today, this geocolor, wonderful satellite shot of the Atlantic Basin. And uh, even though it's cloudy a little bit over Puerto Rico and vicinity today, that wasn't the case the other day. It was kind of overcast. This is a picture. I'll broaden it back out and then zoom in again. This is from Joe, and he is from Goose Creek, South Carolina, down in Puerto Rico. This is over on the west coast of Puerto Rico and uh, there, near the Mayaguez area. And Joe was pointing out, you know, I mean, normally this should be blue sky, right, down in the tropics. And it's that hazy, milky color uh, owed very much to the fact that the Saharan air layer and the dust was moving through and you can clearly see that and if you uh, probably some of it settling out onto smooth surfaces I bet you know run your hand across a smooth car top or windshield or whatever any smooth surface and a lot of times you can get that sort of thin dusty talcum powder um, kinda like if you go into a room that nobody's been in for a few weeks or months and there's just that thin layer of dust and you can clearly see that here so thanks to Joe, who's down there working on cleanup efforts from Goose Creek, South Carolina. I appreciate you sending that in. All right, so let's look at what's happening around the globe. There's Hector. I think this is TD number 11. A couple of other invests here in the East Pacific. Just don't even worry about that. Uh, there's a typhoon in the West Pacific that will impact Japan. And then another area of interest to its east. So the global tropics definitely starting to get more active. Looking in the Atlantic, I will show you this just for a moment. Um, not anything of concern. Invest area 97L, non-tropical in nature, just a large swirl with some convective activity. Water temperatures out here are marginal, you know, probably close to 25, 26 Celsius at the surface. But um, that's the only area worth even mentioning right now. Other than the fact, honestly, I mean, we're starting to see a little bit more in the way of moisture and convection coming off Africa. There's a tropical wave over here with that cloud cover in the eastern and northeastern parts of the Caribbean. So things are slowly changing, kind of slow getting the ship out of the harbor, if you will, for this hurricane season. But later in August, into September, I do believe things will be quite busy uh, in the Atlantic Basin, you know, busier than normal, probably not but busy enough that we will have plenty to track. Right now, that is in the Pacific. So you have Hector, Category 3, these other areas that are going to develop uh, almost for certain, and then in uh, Tropical Depression uh, 11E, and you can see the track to that. Fairly close to mainland Mexico here, so this could bring some shower and thunderstorm activity, heavy rain uh, along the coast of Mexico. <coughs> Excuse me some African dust coming into the office. Um, it's always something, isn't it? So uh, I just have to slow down. I'm so excited to just talk about this stuff. I get ahead of myself and probably forget to breathe sometimes. That's always fun. But really, uh, down along the coast of Mexico, maybe the first impacts in a while, uh, even though there would be indirect, the possibility of some heavier rainfall along portions of the coast here over time. And then we'll see what the other systems do as they develop in the coming days. So an animated shot here of the Atlantic Basin. There's that non-tropical low pressure area. Again, more moisture coming off Africa slowly but surely. Things are changing. It's awesome, too, to see a lack of convective activity all along this area in the eastern United States. Thank goodness the rain machine has shut off for the most part. Bermuda high pressure edging more to the west now, and that's very helpful in cutting off the fire hose that we've had. Uh, we need to dry out because if we do get any tropical activity, you know, homegrown or whatever that comes up through here or from the Gulf Coast across the southeast, that could be very problematic. Uh, even if it was a quote unquote weak system, extra rainfall would be very, very unwelcome. Uh, that's for sure. Looking in the uh, farther to the east, and this is really important. Let me change my color scheme to blue so this stands out better. Uh, I think you know what I'm going to say. I mean, look, there's the Saharan air, very, very 
uh, thick. It's right here in the middle of the scale. There's some pinks in there, you know, towards, you know, remember I talked about this once before, more and less. So this is all less, and this is none, uh, a little bit more dense over here, including the leftovers of what, you know, Joe witnessed the other day. But this, my friends, is more. But where is this? This is extremely important to note. This is up along the northwest coast of Africa, off of Morocco and vicinity, the Canary Islands. This is not down here, you know, coming off Cape Verde or uh, near the Cabo Verde Islands, etc. I mean, come on. It's changing slowly but surely. And so these tropical waves that will come off in subsequent days and weeks will have less and less dry air to deal with as they move into the main development region. But it's not going to happen overnight. It is a slow process, and I still think once we get past August 20th, that's when we should really start the clock, so to speak, for this year's Atlantic hurricane season, the meat of it anyway. All right, looking in the eastern Pacific at the satellite shot here, again, these awesome animations from tropicaltidbits.com, and down along this zone here, what is that, about 20 degrees latitude, and that's about 10 degrees north. So in that area, that's the main development region, right? That's pretty much what it is in the Atlantic Basin. And here you go, the MDR of the Eastern Pacific, very busy. We have Hector over here, fairly small hurricane. TD11 right here, other invests in between that will develop over the coming days. Um, let's see, yep, off of our site, I was trying to remember what was next. This is from our Hurricane Track Insider, so if you're a subscriber, or a Patreon member that is $25 a month and higher. Um, this is part of what you get. I thought I'd pop this up and show you. This is really, really neat technology for tracking from Storm Pulse. Uh, very interactive. I love it. So I thought I'd show you today because I can zoom in and make a couple of points very clear in terms of what is looking like the impacts to Hawaii from Hector. So you notice the cone of uncertainty, as they call it, the probability cone of where the center would be. And you notice here, Wednesday morning and then Thursday morning, uh, luckily Hector's fairly small size should keep a majority of the impacts away from the Big Island. However, the cone of uncertainty is for the center, where the center is forecast to be. And the error cone is not a fence that the hurricane has to stay in. It can deviate. And sometimes it's outside of the cone. Not often, especially with westward moving systems in the relative deep tropics like we see here. But a key point, if this were to be on the north side of the envelope like that, you know, then yes, you could have some pretty significant rainfall and even some tropical storm conditions overall for the big island of Hawaii. So we've got to watch this closely and not just dismiss this because, oh, look, the center is going to be way down here. While Hector is smaller than, I don't want to say it's smaller than a typical hurricane, it's not a large hurricane, let's just call it that, uh, then the impacts should not be too severe. But we need to watch it and make sure of that before you know the all clear is given so to speak and you can see that here in this awesome loop the, of the central pacific again from tropical tidbits this is the 12z gfs and you can see it gains latitude there and then it loses latitude as it treks across and i'm just going to kind of trace it out here it comes back south it's not that pronounced but let's see if i did it right yeah, I was a little too far to the north with my drawing there. But you see, it does try to gain some latitude, clearly, but then it loses that latitude again as it goes by Hawaii. And so we need to see when that happens, because if that bend back to the south is later, then this could get much closer to the big island of Hawaii with the center. And then, you know, even just looking at this, this is the vorticity signature at uh, 5,000 feet in the atmosphere, you know, it's still a possibility of some direct impacts there for Hawaii. So don't disregard this because the center is forecast to say stay to the south. And I will monitor accordingly. 
I don't think I'm going to be getting on a plane for Hawaii because it's not a direct impact. It's not a large hurricane, and it would probably fall apart very quickly. And it's just not. And we'll see. I mean, I still have time tomorrow, and even Tuesday if I have to. Uh, yeah, that's the beauty of air travel is you can be anywhere in the world in half a day if you need to. Yeah, probably more than that, depending on customs and if you're going out of the country, etc. But you get the idea. But I'm pretty confident that I'll be sitting right here watching Hector go to the south of Hawaii at a fairly comfortable distance. Okie doke. Well, that should just about do it for today. As always, I appreciate you tuning in. Um, real quick, since it is August, you know, pointing out once again, I am on Twitter at Hurricane Track, and we do have the Patreon going, which is a neat, really amazing way to support creators like myself. You think about the gamers and people producing animation and podcasts, news, music, you know, film, and I kind of embody a lot of that with not only these daily updates, but also the videos that I put out, the documentaries, and then the field work, etc. And I'm trying to grow this and really propel this into the future and tell people, look, you know, who do you work for, Mark? I can say, I work for the people. I love that. I mean, corporate sponsors and so forth, I'm sure that's nice, too. I had that in the early part of my career. Um, but, man, that can be gone with a phone call. And it did. And so when you have, you know, potentially hundreds of people giving you a paycheck each month, they're not all going to, quote, unquote, fire you at once. I wasn't fired, but when the economy tanked, so went all the corporate support. But anyway, story for another day. I am on Patreon, so check that out if you get a chance. It gives you the most access, uh, one of the levels. You'll see. Just check it out. It's got a good little promo video at the very least. All right, that's it for me. Have a great rest of your Sunday. I'll be back, of course, tomorrow with more. I am Mark Sutter, HurricaneTrack.com, and we shall chat more tomorrow.